Hey y'all, welcome back. It's James from Pain Life. Um, up here in the middle of summer, today's July 7th. Um, we've got a early August, I say August 28th, early velvet hunt. It's buck only on private land. So just had to get the shop kind of picked up a little bit. Uh, got a few things, got to order and get ready. So out here in this scorching heat, but I got the AC on an hour. But I'm gonna do a quick video on uh, what my process shop's like. So stay tuned. Okay. This is my shop. It's a 10 by 20. Uh, when I moved here, there was two concrete pads of metal buildings. And uh, I built this probably 12 years ago. I actually processed deer for a guy for a few years and then um, just got to where I took uh, my deer to processors and the price just kept going up and I wasn't getting as much meat back, so I wanted to do it myself. So I actually started in that building right there. It's a little eight by 10 by eight. And we insulated it and put a window AC unit and we Southern uh, aged everything on ice in coolers and used a hand crank grinder and a small, little bit small 110 grinder and a food saver vacuum seal. But over the years, we've grown and uh, we do a lot of different deer now. We do we do deer, our deer, which all my whole family hunts, all my kids, my dad, uh, my cousins, and then we have surrounding farms that uh, they bring their deer to me. Uh, we kind of keep our finger on the pulse of, of the bucks and buck movement and rut movement here in Piney and Loudoun, Tennessee. But anyway, we'll get in here to this. Um, this building has paid for itself 10 times over, but we call it the chop shop. So welcome to the chop shop. We got a bunch of memorabilia and signs and different stuff. It's kind of like a deer hunter's man cave. Um, show you around here a little bit. As you can see, entry door. And then we got some bucks and stuff up our window. That AC unit is a lifesaver on days like this. Uh, milk cooler you know put everything in radio got some older bucks and deer that i've killed and i'll tell you a little bit about them in a minute everything in here is stainless tables but anyway i'll walk you through the process <coughs> they bring them in log them in i've got all my books and stuff from two or three years in here uh got my tags keep all the deer separate this is my walk-in cooler. It's a 1948 or 49 vintage Warren. It's a cedar. It's actually a cedar outside and inside made of wood. It has porcelain sides on it. It's got the big door on the front and then it's got the windows and the mirror. You can see inside it, a little mirror. But uh, I can actually, you can see it's a warrant. Uh, I actually, when I was 13, 14 year old, I worked at a little store out here, mom and pop store called Virgil Simpson's Grocery. And this was the cooler they kept their milk, their eggs, their meat, whatever in. And um, when he passed away, his daughter closed it down. And this sitting there and somebody bought it. And I traced it down, which is really odd because as you'll hear through this, I ended up gaining more stuff out of that store after it closed. But this is a seven foot wide, nine foot tall. Oh yeah, it makes real good storage for my blinds from turkey season. <laughs> but it's seven foot tall, nine foot deep, nine foot high. Now the compressor weather never could get running. And if you're familiar with Pine Life, you've seen my cool bot video that I did. So um, I've got a cool bot in it now. And uh, we'll step in here and look at it. I turned this on about 25, 30 minutes ago. I wanted to run it a little bit for, you know, let everything cycle, make sure my air conditioner ain't stopped up, and clean the filter. So I've cleaned everything in here, started this probably 20, 25 minutes ago. It's 81 degrees in here. As you can see, it's 48 degrees. Of course, the air conditioner don't know that. It thinks it's 60. But anyway, uh, as you can see, it's all cedar, cedar sides, cedar roof. Got me a little fluorescent LED light in here. Uh, hang everything on a pole. Got our gamble hooks, made it work. We can hang up to eight deer in here. 
Uh, that's really about all I really want to hold at one time. It takes a while to work them up. But uh, that's the inside of the cooler. Then uh, I do have a winch come, or I do have a winch bolt. I've actually got to mount it. But now these cylinders are 10 foot high. And when I built this, I put an eight bay across the rafters and braced it all in and run me an eye bolt through the roof. Now we, for years we have used a bolt winch and it works great. But I would like to be able to skin deer uh, with my electric winch. So I have a Warren 110 winch that uh, I'm gonna probably be installing this week. But anyway, that's our setup. Nylon rope up to that. Deer get here, they get skint down. Deer as they're, and I debone my, and you'll see it this fall, I'll do some videos on it. I debone my deer on the carcass. So I remove all the meat while it's hanging here. All the way down to the head. Leave as much of the skeleton I can because I can't stand bone dust in my deer meat. And I don't like getting bone fragments in my grinders and dulling stuff up. So we start from the hams down, back straps, rib meat, stripping it, brisket, down into the neck. All right, that whole deer will come over here. I've got some stuff soaking over here in the sink. I've got my stainless sink here, a uh, little 110 water heater. It don't make a whole lot of hot water, but it's good for about 15 minutes. But uh, put a little uh, salt in there, fill it up with cold water, drop that meat in there while I'm prepping this table and let any loose hire anything we might have missed. And we, we really pride ourselves in getting the hire off the deer. So we wanna make sure. So on this table, I have my cut boards. This is one of my stainless tables. Uh, here, I've got my chud tubs, my charred chud tubs. I've got them here. I've got some in the cabinet. And then of course I've got some stored in the cooler with the lids. But I'll segregate ever how the person wants it. So if they're wanting steaks, I'll cut the steaks here and then they'll move straight to the vacuum sealer. If they're grind, they go in a chub tub with the guy with the person's name on it and they go over to one of my grinders, ever who's at the grinding station. I can run this process by myself. I mean, it takes a while. Anybody that works up deer knows it takes a while, but I do have kids and friends and cousins and people that trade out their deer, me processing them help me. So, uh, kind of a win-win and then I'll do a few deer through the year for people just so I could buy my own bags and stuff. That's how we kind of paid for the shed. But anyway, I'll cut them here on the cut table, segregate everything uh, all the way down to the small pieces of meat for grind, steaks, back straps, whatever they want to butterfly, everything gets segregated here. All right, if it's a jerky deer, I've got this whole bark slicer. Now when I started, I started with a little Walmart $25 slicer. And it worked fine for years. And I did them on the little Harvest Nest or Harvest something, Golden Harvest uh, dehydrators. But anyway, this is a Hobart. And this actually come out of the same store that this come out of. And actually, I got this piece first, this two years later, and then this milk cooler was in there, which I, I put the Outlaws emblem on it. But this milk cooler was there when somebody else bought it and they closed it down and they give me this cooler for free to boob it, just to get it out of their store. And it works great, but back to the process. So I've got my slicer to do my, I can do up to one inch wide stakes or I can actually do a little wider than one inch. I can do an inch and a half on this. But 99% of the time I use this for jerky slices. Okay. Then if we're going to grind and we move over here, I have a uh, Northern grinder, a very good grinder. Uh, I would recommend one of these to anybody. I bought this from a guy that, that quit processing. Uh, this was the last one I purchased. The one before I have, which is still my backup, is my limb. And then in this cabinet over here, I've got the original Gander Mountain and the other off brand that I used for the first couple years. But this is where the grinding gets done. And then, so now we've got all of our choice cuts and everything's laid out. Then we come over here and if it's ground, it gets put, you know, we weigh everything on our scales. Um, go ahead and vacuum seal 
uh, bag everything out. I use BPA approved bags from Amazon. They work great. I hardly ever have any leaks. But when I first started, I was using a food saver and I still got several different ones in here and different cabinets all around. Uh, some of them I use when I've only got rolls to cut and make my bags. But if I could recommend something that stands up to time, I bought these Cabela's. I bought one of them probably a year ago. It's Cabela's CG15 vacuum sealer. I bought it used on eBay. Um, it's worked flawlessly. It gets hot after a while. You're doing two or three deer, you're doing 70 packs of, of, uh, of meat. It'll eventually, you know, try to slow down and won't pull. But I found another one on eBay and bought it. So I have two now. And all I do to these things, they're the same as a Weston house. There, you can get the kits for, I don't know, I think both of them cost you about $90 a year to fix. But what I do, it comes with the new seals. Move that skull. It comes with the top and bottom seal, Teflon strip, and the heat strip that goes under it. That's all I do to replace before I start any deer season. And we will be running both of these at the same time as somebody's over here. So, yeah, I got one guy skinning. When it's the rudder, we got a lot of deer. There's one guy skinning. I'm cutting up the meat that comes out of the sink. Uh, we got somebody grinding and somebody's carrying it straight over to chub tubs over to, you know, to over to these vacuum sealers. Um, I've got a Gander Mountain. Uh, it's really a 10 tray, but I only use five. It's Gander Mountain uh, dehydrator, commercial dehydrator. And I've had that thing for five, six years and it's been a trooper. It's time to replace it, but it's been a trooper. But uh, as you can see, all this, uh, I insulated this back wall because I didn't have no porcelain uh, for the back part of this. It's just a corner set uh, cooler, but just a little bit around here of the shop shop. I've had several people say, or do one on your shop. People like coming out here and hanging out in the fall. Uh, I'll throw in a little quick bit. It, I take taxidermist the same as a tattoo. This deer was a bruiser in its day. And my cousin paid a hundred dollars to have that deer mounted and that's what he got. Deals to say he ended up bringing it out here and putting it, he don't have it in his house, but he brought it out here just so everybody could see it. But his brother had that deer on the very end. He had it done by the same guy for a hundred bucks. So, Taxidermy is just like a tattoo or anything else. You pay for what you get. But uh, still, they're two good monarchs for here in Piney, uh, 10, 15 year old deer. So, you know, you gotta honor them in some way. Now, this deer here, it's one of my good friends. Uh, took it with me in the mountains. Uh, he got it mounted and when he got it home, his wife decided he couldn't have it in the house. So, uh, it reminds me of him every time I'm in here. And then the deer in the middle, the one that's the smallest one on the wall, will be going on my playlist of hunting stories. That deer might not be big, but he has one awesome story behind him, and we call him All Nighter. So be looking forward to that video. But if you like what we're doing, uh, you like these videos, it's just basically about our life as we get through the deer season. We've got, we're getting geared up and ready for deer season, food plots, we're doing everything. But if you like these videos, uh, it helps us out if you'd subscribe and if you do like them hit that like button ring that bell for notifications and uh, We'll have more coming to you this fall and more probably more through the summer But as always we really thank you all for watching uh, We have fun doing it and hope we can bring a little bit of our world to you and as always God bless catch you next time